Lovely noise. Lovely, lovely noise. Hello and welcome back to my continued testing of the brand new Synology SNV series of NVMe SSDs. We're utilizing the brand new E10M20 uh, combination 10 GBE and SSD cache card and we're going to kick off today's video as part one of a series of videos where we're going to see the benefits of SSD cache. We've got the card installed inside an SA3400 as you can see on screen but I should probably mention something straight off the bat. I am running today's video afterwards. I've already recorded all of the tests for today's videos and I'm supplying voice over a day or so later. I should probably take a moment to explain but before we go anywhere let's look at the what we're utilizing today. We've got two RAID 5 configurations on this system both of which using Ultrastar 10TB drives in a RAID 5 environment one of each. Both are done with exactly the same amount of data. A slight discrepancy there with regards to the total storage because of the SSDs inside. We've let the SSD cache run for a while so it could build some caching. And we've got one RAID 5 with no SSD caching and another RAID 5 with SSD caching enabled. So what that will allow us to do is run identical tests on each volume inside this system and one volume is going to have the benefits of cache and the other one isn't. And ultimately over the top, we should see when we run all of our tests that are going to be covering today, AJA and Blackmagic over 10 GBE externally. And um, uh, later videos are going to be covering from Atto Benchmark to Windows Upload Download to Passmark. But today, let's get started with our test. I'm going to talk you through the entire arrangement here at the beginning. In future videos, it's going to be quite short. But as you can see, there are our storage pools, which have got the different areas of uh, one with cache, one without. And what you may notice during today's video is sometimes some of the things I say may be slightly out of sync by a few seconds with what you see on screen there. And that is because these have been running. This has been recorded a couple of days ago. Uh, I should probably let Rob explain to you now why that is. Thanks for that, Rob. Well, as you can see right now, this is just too noisy an environment to conduct any kind of test and record live. So what I'm going to do is perform all the tests for today's video, and then you over there can do the voiceover for me. Back to you, Rob. Thanks, Rob. Coming back, as you can see there, we're back on this now. Now, we're utilizing that 10G connection. We've got a 10 gigabit Ethernet connection thanks to that card, which we're utilizing on the NAS. And... That 10G connection you can see there on screen, we've got the MTU up to 9000. And if we go to the network connections on my local PC, I'm using a Thunderbolt 10G connector. And as you can see, if we go into it, the MTU has been set to 9000 here as well. So we've opened up the jumbo packets or jumbo frame between both this NAS, it, the card, and the uh, hard drives and SSD caching internally. We've got that 10G connection. And because we're using a RAID 5 with those ultra stars, we will have the potential to get quite high in terms of speed, but we're not going to max out 10G on four hard drives in a RAID 5. Even if they are ultra star drives, we're not going to see benefits uh, up to that 1000. As you can see, we've mapped a couple of network drives. We've got one network drive there for the test files without cache and one that has cache enabled. Later in this video, I am going to split screen this so we can see either side of the screen that's going to show us this testing happening on either of these drives. Although they have been recorded about an hour or two apart, it's the same system, same hard drives, same memory, and I'm just going to go through all of these steps right now, and then we'll split screen it and go through what both of them are going to do. But, as you can see, we've got our network connections, we've got our map network drives, and we are recording, as you can see, with OBS. So, without further ado, let's get the first test started. Right, so the tests are now on screen for both the cache and non-cache environments. As you can probably see straight away, the non-cache environment certainly had a higher start. And I think a lot of that is to do with the cache itself needing a little bit of time to learn these new files that are coming through as they pass through the cache and the system analyzes them. But even though it is a high start, it has to be said, the no cache array on the left is a little bit jumping on the right hand side of the screen although it had a slow start 
If you look at the graphs at the bottom that are underneath the AJA panel, using this 256 megabyte test file, we can see that it's a better consistency overall. It's maintaining those speeds. And that's kind of one of the main benefits of caching. You will notice this effect gets lesser and lesser as you go for the bigger files, but looking at this 256 megabyte file in AJA over 10 GBE, we can see that the speed is more consistent over the two because the SSD are working with the hard drive. But again, the effects of SSD cache are widely and pretty much largely based on smaller files. Now, as we go through the different tiers of this test system, we're almost certainly gonna see the SSD caching benefits decrease over time. Let's move into the one GB test file. So now we've started the one gigabyte test file. It's worth noticing that we did see that early read boost there straight away on the array with the SSD caching, but the non-cached has caught up even quicker. Now, in terms of write, we are seeing an even speed there between the two of them. And a lot of that is, I think, to do with the RAID 5 across four disks, because we're kind of hitting the overall top speed. Thanks to this one gigabyte test file being quite a chunky file, um, and this being a 10G connection, we're seeing the limits of what those four hard drive ultra stars uh, in that RAID 5 environment across both of these arrays can give us. I will say that the graphs are pretty even between them. There is a little bit of fluctuation there against the top read write, and I do think we're seeing um, overall faster performance on the caching, but even then it is negligible and not exactly huge. So the one gigabyte test file does seem to be spiking, although as you would expect from AJA, because it uses kind of a block-based format as it creates these test files, there is fluctuations up and down for each, throughout each wave of this test. And I think what will be really interesting to see is the next test where we're moving over to a 16 gig file. Finally, now we're looking at the 16 gigabyte test file. We can certainly see that the cache does seem to maintain those speeds just a little bit more. Now we're seeing improved write this time over that of the non-cache array, which surprised me quite a lot, as well as an improved read, which surprised me a little bit less. The speed does look on average like it is going to be lower on that of the non-cache. And this is a 16 gig test file. So the you know, each wave of this test is going to take quite a while as the system has to work with my own internal SSD to create that 16 gig test file. I'm certainly gonna look into the AJA test file afterwards, but right now I do think we are seeing improved read and write with the caching, but a lot of that is to do with the kind of block-based uh, creation that AJA uses for that test file as it creates it. Um, over the network and then reads the file just to see the consistency overall. Um, certainly we did see a more consistent graph there at the bottom across all three tests with regards to the cache. And I think a lot of that is just because of the extra buffering that that cache does present. Although it's worth mentioning that this isn't really where you would see the overall performance of caching overall. And if it wasn't for the fact that AJA uses a more uh, modular and dare I say granular attitude of file creation in the back end, we might not see um, results as good or as you know huge disparity between these two tests here. But now what we're gonna do is wrap things up with AJA and make our way over to Black Magic. Now Black Magic is a different kind of test in a number of ways. It does test a lot of things, not just file weight. We are still using these map network drives and we're gonna be using a one gigabyte test file. And although we are of course looking quite a lot at the read and write speeds, it's worth taking a quick note of the average for each version at the bottom right. Now, um, as this test proceeds, one of the things that I did pick up quite early doors in this test was that early spin up. Now, Black Magic needs a lot of time in a larger file type to get the proper, you know, recording of read and write. So whenever you do a black magic test on a NAS over a network drive, you will notice that it will generally jump in gradients of 200 megs. It will go two, three to four, four to five, as it spins up because the test is over before the drives can really get started. But I will say that there was definitely an early spin up advantage to the non-cache because the cache version was clearly analyzing and that was utilizing a lot of hardware assets on both the SSDs and the system in general, and that resulted in that lower early performance. But as 
it has proceeded, we're seeing that higher performance now shine through as the test continues, although it wasn't there at the beginning. And now we are seeing that the hard drives are having a slower buildup compared with that of the SSD cache as time wears on, because the SSD cache has needed time to analyze these tests. Now remember, Blackmagic does alternate as it goes, so you will see those speeds on the caching suddenly take a jump down uh, with occasional waves, and that was to be expected. Blackmagic, once again, is kind of a ideal scenario test rather than something to give you real-time testing, but overall, I think early doors, no cache had the win straight away, but as time has worn on, the cache has got to grips with this test. Let's move to the five gigabyte test file. Now the five gigabyte test file is clearly giving Blackmagic a lot more to work with and therefore these speeds are gonna be a lot more readable as it takes a little bit more time to create that five gig test file. We're certainly seeing better early write on the no cache there on the left, but we are seeing better read on the cache version there on the right hand side. So it's quite interesting to see how that SSD um, gives a kind of early buffer advantage during the course of this. But as we can see, this test is taking a little while longer than that of the 1GBE, but as time wears on, we start to see better read and write start to present itself with the caching on uh, the right-hand side of the screen there. It's not huge, definitely a very small advantage, but it is a noticeable advantage. Once again, with the occasional dip as the cache has to deal with newer file codecs and new file types on the bottom right of the screen there. Overall, I do think a lot of the caching we've seen in today's tests has kind of shine, uh, shone through, but as you would expect from SSD caching, those advantages have largely been based on those of the smaller file types overall. And if you're gonna be dealing with larger 4K files or things like Plex Media Server or just dealing with larger files overall, you're not really gonna see the inherent advantages of caching. But if there's lots of small files in between, I think this test does indicate that you will see those benefits. In our next test, we will be looking at that of Windows upload and download over 10 GBE and the benefits of cache there. For those of you that run backups or editing, it might be of use. But thanks for watching this video. Do check out part two, click like. If you enjoyed it, click subscribe to learn more. And I'll see you on part two in this series.